we will continue in this morning on the second blessings that King Asa received. Now we saw the first blessings where the Lord battled for King Asa and the people of Judah. And we saw that the Lord just made them stand there and watch while God's army defeated and routed the entire Ethiopians who were at outnumbered against the people of Judah. They were one million people with 300 chariots, powerful chariots, and again just 500,000 people. And the Lord did the battle. The result of the Lord's battle was due to, all right, two things. One, he removed every of the altars, every of the sacred places, all right, that was built in this land, and he cleansed them, okay? Their spiritual cleansing was done. And secondly, when there was struggle and trouble, he turned to God in all humility and depended totally on the Lord. Now, this is the beauty of the faith. When you say we have faith, we must live in faith. And thus it was Asa who did that and we also seek after the Lord and the entire nation seek after God. We saw how God battled for King Asa and Judah. And likewise in our life, when we do away some of the altars that we have, some of the sacred places that we have in our life and we do them away, when we cleanse them, all right, it could be your hurts, it could be your brokenness, it could be a life crisis, it could be anger, wrath, unforgiveness, or maybe sickness or whatever, all right, even drunkenness in our life, you have them all. You have an idol in your life that you need to go for spiritual cleansing. And when that spiritual cleansing is taking place, you find the favor of the Lord coming upon you, all right? And in any eventuality, the devil is never happy. Let me tell you, the devil is never happy to see you always in the sight of God with blessings of God. The devil wants to disturb you. But just like in the life of Job, all right, he was all fine selling. And, and he challenged God and says, of course he will bless you. Because you are blessed him so much. Give him to me. I will see that he will curse you. And we saw how Job stood the test. He remained faithful despite of all the losses he went through. The momentary losses that was very heavy inflicted on him. But yet he did not sin against, he did not question God. All right, there are times when we go through a lot of difficult why this happens. I see in our life that someone dies in our family, why God is doing this. That shows how much of spiritual maturity, maturity we are in. All right, we do not understand the work of God. All right, when someone whom you love so much dies at a premature age or whatever, we begin to question God. And we become despondency of our, of our relations with God. All right, some even don't come to church, don't read, don't pray, because why you take them? All right, it shows our immaturity of our faith. We must be able to accept what Job said, God gave, God take it away and give glory to God. He lost his, all his seven children. All right, he did not question God. You gave me these children and you took away, Lord, through this natural calamity. He never questioned God. And that's the maturity he had. And thus we saw how Asa, that you stood, and when he was facing another momentum war, he turned to the Lord, not to any human being. All right, when you are in a dire need, when you are in a dire need of anything, my friend, it could be finance, it could be food, it could be relation issues, it could be anything, sickness or malignant or, or whatever it is, turning to God. Ultimately and depending on God, you will see how the power of God works. And likewise, when Asa turned to the Lord, in all humility, we saw how God defeated entire Ethiopian right before the eyes of Asa and Judah. All right? And this was the first blessings. What was the second blessing? Now the second blessings is found in verse 13. In verse 13, let's read it. And the people who were with him pursued them as far as Gura, and many Ethiopians fell, and they could not recover as they were shattered before the Lord and before his army, and they were carried away very much plunder. Now, the key word was, right, that they were shattered, all right, they were shattered, all right, and before the Lord and before his army. 
Now you look at the word. They were shattered before God and his army. Now you look at the word. His is the capital H. It's not Judah. It is not King Asa's army. It was God's army. Alright, we need to see the word very carefully. Defeated and shattered the enemies. My friend, the Lord will shatter and scatter and defeat your enemies of your soul. That's the key thing. Alright, he will defeat and shatter and scatter all the enemies of our soul. Now the word shattered means to be broken into pieces. Alright, that we can be beyond recognition. And the Lord did the thing to the Ethiopian. They were utterly shattered. They were utterly scattered. They were scattered in the in the world. They're running in all directions. Alright. They could not regroup themselves to face up with the army of the Lord. Alright. And they were so scattered so much. Now we see that how God works for his children. Now turning to the book of Exodus chapter 9. Now in Exodus chapter 9. Now this is the seventh plague upon the Egyptian. When the Israelites were caught, were kept under the captivity under the Pharaoh in Egypt. All right, and so the Lord wanted to deliver them, and there were nine plagues. And the seventh plague we saw, we see here, it was as 18 onward, it was a hail and brimstone of fire came down. All right, it came down hard on them. All right, it came down hard on, on, on the entire people. And we look at verse 23. All right, and he says here, And Moses stretched out his staff towards the sky, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and the fire ran down to the earth, and the Lord rained hail on the land of Egypt. Okay, verse 24. And the hail and the flashing continued in the midst of the hail. They were very severe, such as not been seen in all the land of Egypt since the, it became a nation. All right, and the key word is 25. And the hail struck all that was in the field through all the land of Egypt, both men and the beasts. And the hail was struck every plant of the field and shattered every tree of the field. The Lord wanted to show the Pharaoh that he is God. All right, and you don't touch my people. Do you know when the hills of fire and brimstone was coming upon the land of Egypt, where the Israelite was staying in the land called Goshen, that Goshen land was untouched. There was not a single hail, there's not a single brimstone fell upon Goshen where his children were there. And so, my friend, when the Lord battles, all right, he will keep you safe, all right, and he will do the battle and he will make sure you'll utterly scatter the enemies of yours right now turning to the book of psalms 68 verse 1 what does he say psalms that's good and you can able to underscore this verse we may have a lot of enemies my friend enemies of your soul all right let me tell you this in chapter 68 verse 1 we read here let God arise and his enemies be scattered and Lord those who hate him flee before him all right let the enemies be scattered let God arise and enemies be scattered let me tell you this my friend whoever whatever your enemy could be they will be scattered and they will be confused in Psalms 144 verse 6 the Lord will scatter them and confuse them. Alright, and this is it. Right, the Lord is doing you a battle on your behalf. Alright, that he will shatter and completely, alright, shatter every of your enemies of your souls, my friend, that we need to understand. The Lord is doing a battle in your life and you are walking upright with God. When you have removed all your idols in your life, when you have walked in faithfulness, in obedience with the Lord, the Lord will clear every path of your, every wars that you are coming, every storms that comes upon your life, the Lord will scatter them. The Lord will utterly scatter them. The Lord utterly will shatter them and destroy them right before your eyes. Alright, as Psalms 91 says, 
you will see the recompense of the wicked. You will see. But let me tell you something here. The Lord told Asa and Judah to be ready with your army. That's all he said. All right. It means they need to be ready. But the Lord who did the battle with his army, with his angels. All right. Friends, we need to understand. The Lord tells us in Psalms 23, even though I walk through the valley of death, I fear no evil. You will walk through the valley of death. That's the difference. We will walk through the valley of death, but the difference between us and the world is, those who walk through the valley, these people will, they will die. They will commit suicide. They cannot take this. But the beauty in us, even though we walk through the valley of death, we fear no evil. Because the Lord God is with us. His rod and staff is with us. That's the difference. The Lord walks with us. He's with us. He lives with us. All right. He knows every of your struggles that you go through. And He will ensure that every enemies, right, of your soul, enemies physically we are talking about, if you have one enemies among you, then you ought to pray and let the Lord do His work. You don't do your work. You don't have to fight. You don't have to go in and stand up and fight, my friend. The Lord will do the battle for you. Whatever you see it spiritually, turn the situation spiritually. You need to look at it spiritually in every aspect. And we began in our college. The first lesson that we learned was to change our specs. Now what I mean, not our specs, literally. We were told to see how we should see the light of the scripture. And I was given a picture of Penang. All right, Penang and the mainland. And so I need to come out spiritually what I see here. And so initially we were wondering what it is all about. All right, but what we were taught to look at the situation spiritually. So what was mine was, island of Penang was we people, and the mainland is God. And then I was given a picture where the Penang bridge was. And that bridge was Jesus Christ. All right, so we can just visualize it spiritually. The Penang Island was just desolated without a bridge. All right, and then the mainland was not connected with it. So now with the bridge, it has been connected. So we are being connected with God through Jesus Christ. So what I'm trying to say is that in every situation of your life, don't see it physically. Don't see it physically. You have to see it spiritually. And that is where the scripture tells us. Let's turn to what does Second Corinthians tells us. Second Corinthians chapter five. Second Corinthians chapter five underscore verse seven. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Okay, we walk by faith, not by sight. By sight, you will be a failure. All right, you go by your sight, you go by your lean on understanding, you go by your own wisdom. Failure meets on the other end. But when you go by faith, let me tell you this. Your faith will help you. Your faith will help you. The Lord will defeat the battle that you're going through. So whatever it is, your enemy that you have, my friend, the Lord can shatter them you, and scatter them away and defeat them, whatever it could be. So you need to understand yourself. What are your enemies of your soul? You know, one of the one, number one enemy of our soul is our emotion. Your emotion can be your own enemy. So we need to check this emotion. You know, when this emotion is one of them displays is anger. All right, some people have got anger in their top pocket, you know. Christian I'm talking about, not non-Christian. Uh, and you can see in their face how dark and dirty it looks like when you get angry. All right, you look very ugly, yeah, when you get angry. You lose the beauty of the Lord. Or when you lose your top temper. And this is the emotion. Many of us will lose our, our testimony through our temper. When we lose our temper, our mouth loses its gear. 
Okay, do you know when you come down from Genting, when you free your gear in your car, your car goes what? Uncontrollable. Same time, my friend, when we lose our cool, that's the time we lose our mouth. And that's where our emotion begins to flow. Wrath comes in, cursing what comes in, unnecessary what comes in. We do not live by faith. We are going by sight and we lose. And let me tell you this, in such incidences, you don't see God there. You won't see God acting for you. You won't see God is battling for you. You are battling yourself because you took it upon yourself. Right? And see, we see the Lord told Asa, you just stand and watch and I will scatter your enemies. We need to scatter our enemies, my friends. Our enemies that are within us. These days that our enemies within us is making us ugly, making us so ugly with one another, with outsiders. Right? We need to know like David Livingston, when he went to Africa as a, as a, as a missionary, all right, and he was serving the Lord very faithfully among the Sudanese. All right, when he died, he's an Englishman. They, they wanted to take his body back to England. But the Sudanese said, you can take back the body, can we have his heart? So they took his heart and they buried it in Sudan and they took the body back to England. Now why? The exemplary life David Livingston lived. The eternal light, even though there was war against him, there were opposition against him in the initial time of his missionary work. He was a white man. You know, going to a place with his suits and with his shoes on, he was unaccepted. So he has to change his lifestyle. All right, he has to walk barefooted at certain places of villages. He did that. All right, if you look at his autobiography, he tells us very clearly he's a simple lifestyle with the people and warm their heart. All right, he adjusted himself. All right, and so much so the people loved him and said, could we have his heart buried in this land? And it was so. Friend, this are testimony. There are plenty of testimonies that we can say. All right, plenty of testimony like Kerry Tangun, which I've spoken before. All right, while with the Nazi came, came all right, there they were ill-treated. The Jews were ill-treated and what we call the Holocaust, all right? And the women were shamed, all right? They were made stark naked, was told to walk around the field while the entire Nazi army looks and make fun of their bodies, all right? And Kerry Tenbun was one of them. And finally the war ended, the Nazis were defeated, all right? And, and she went about in the ministry and it was in England that she was preaching, right? In London, as she was preaching the word of God, and then, after the service, she came out of the pastor and was in the, out of the door, greeting everyone. And suddenly, a familiar face appeared before her. And this guy put up his hand to shake hand with her. And Kerry Tinbun, instead of shaking, she hugged him. As an old man, hugged him. And this man was a bit amused why Kerry is hugging him. Then she told him, remember, sir, in the Nazi camp, you are the army captain that you stripped me naked, made fun of me, and you made me walk the entire field. You are the man. And I told tell you this, Jesus loves you and I love you. What a powerful testimony. Would we, in the shoes of Kerry, would we do the same thing that she did? Or what would we would do? Revenge. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. This is our display. This are our uh, <coughs> idols. These are our sacred places these days we have in our life. Friends, we need to come to terms with ourselves. What are our idols that within us that is pulling us down? That our enemies are not scattered. That our enemies are not scattered. That our enemies are not defeated because we are just holding on to them. We need to understand this, my friend. When you do it, the Lord then comes an important part in your life and he will do the battle he will do the battle for you right and you need to understand when you begin to give yourself and humble yourself before the lord your god the lord can lift you up the lord will honestly lift you up because he knows how hard you try in your life 
Asa was not simply figurative term. He went into action to remove every of the idols. He crushed them. All right, there was a lot of action and efforts were put in. Likewise, my friend, there was a lot of effort we need to put on. All right, work out your salvation. That's what the scripture tells Paul tells us. All right, to the Philippians, work your salvation out. He saw them, what he saw in the Philippines, you know, malice. He saw in them anger. He saw in them a lot of wickedness and drunkenness in, in, in the Philippine church. Philippine, and he told them, work your salvation out. What does it mean? It doesn't mean that you're going to do charity work. All right? He is calling that you need to renew your mind. All right? You need to renew your mind. You're coming to the church, but you're still a drunkenness. You're coming to the church you're still with the abusive language. You're coming to the church with malice. You have come into the church with the wrath. You have come into the church with anger. You have come into the church with unforgiveness. You have come into the church with dissensions and divisiveness. So Paul said, work your salvation. Right? That means what? You need to come with a renewed mind. Now, renewed mind means, all right, not taking your water and washing your brain. All right? It takes effort. All right? It takes effort like what Asa did. You need to come before the Lord, before the Lord, not to anybody else. And to tell the Lord, all right, what we call the title, call of ministry of renunciation. All right, that you need to renounce things that has been coming along with you all this way and pulling you down and never makes you success in your life. So this is something that you need to look what are your enemies of your soul. You need to ask yourself, what are those enemies in my soul that is being defeated, that I myself been defeated? Right? My friend, we need to see that we need to see in faith and how we can overcome them. Let me just give you one more and I'll, before I finish. Turning to Second Chronicles again. Look at chapter 20. A classical example of this particular man. All right? This is another king called Jehoshaphat. In what, chapter 20 of Second Chronicles, all right, look at verse 3. Jehoshaphat was afraid and turned his attention to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout of all Judah. This is another God-fearing king. All right? And there the Amorites were coming all out attack. All right? And Jehoshaphat was afraid. All right, friends, we are afraid when situation down on us. <clears throat> when crisis come on us, we are afraid. This man was afraid. Jehoshaphat was afraid. He knew what kind of army he was facing. All right? And what he did, he turned attention and seek the Lord. And he added one more thing. He fasted. He declared a fast throughout all Judah. All right, my friend. He did the right thing. Jehoshaphat did not call all his generals. Sit down, let's work out our strategy. How we will ambush. How we will do that. He didn't do that. All right, when he was afraid, when he saw the situation, all right, he was frightened. Friend, he talks about a literal physical being of a man. All right, he was frightened. We are frightened over when see crisis comes upon dawning on us. We are frightened to see. All right, in the moment of fright, what should we do? And Jehoshaphat has told us and taught us a lesson. Seek the Lord. Turn your attention is easily spoken, it's hard to practice, let me tell you this. All right, turn your attention to the Lord. All right, and it possibly, here we see, he declared a fast. All right, he declared a fast. And what was the end result, my friend? The Lord told him, listen, you are Amorite fellows are all out there. I want you to take the Levites. The Levites are the priests. Put them before your army. All right, let them worship, let them <laughs> sing song. All right, let them give glory to God. Do that. All right, look at verse 22. All right, they all began singing and praising. Hello, do you know our worship is so important today to worship the Lord, to open our mouth to worship our God? Is look like no gold nuggets are falling out of our mouth. Some are stiff like a statue. Am I right? Look at the verse here. They began singing and praising. The next word, the Lord set an ambush against the sons of Amorite. The Lord fought for you by your worship, my friend. 
by your praises, my friend. So don't come to church standing like a rock. Statue in worshipping. Doesn't do any good to us. Alright? If you have a problem, and that's where the book uh, Prison to Praise by Merlin Keller, there's a great writer. You read his book, he will tell you. Every real situation, every real situation he was facing, you know what he was doing? He was praising the Lord. Alright, he was a, a chaplain in the US Army during the Vietnam War, all right? And many of them done, you know, dead, they don't want to go to Vietnam to fight. All right, all the youngsters were pulled in through the national service. They refused to, they don't want to go because they'll come back and dead bodies. I was in Singapore during this uh, fall of Saigon, all right? And then there was one shipload was brought into Singapore and, and it was uh, kept away from the harbor all right, and then they were calling for people. You know why? There were a lot of body parts, American soldiers' body parts were in the ship. And you have to go in, all right, every of the body parts are being tagged. And you have to go into the ship and to get the tags and bring the bodies together and put them in a coffin box. All right, that was the scenario. All right, and so every serviceman in U.S. done going to Vietnam. They didn't want to go. They know they'll come back in a dead body in a body bag all right and people and yet they went to this chaplain and says i don't want to go and he says you have, you have given an order all right we have to go no choice and he says would you able to praise god at that moment are you able to praise god that you've been drafted into an army to send you to the Vietnam? all right are you able to thank god this is it my friend in every situation that you are facing every crisis that you're facing are you able to praise God? That's the key thing. In every situation you are in the cliff end up, are you able to worship God? This is what Jehoshaphat did. He knew he was facing a powerful army before him and the stupidity, all right, he would think what God is telling him to do to put my priest before the army. All right? And they went singing and praising. And God was doing them bushing. This is it. All right, if you have a problem in your life, my friend, let me tell you this, I do this. If you have a problem in your life right now, if you're facing some issues in your life, whatever it could be, my friend, can you go back home and put the issue before God and praise God and worship Him? I will tell you this, 101%. Not 100%. 101%. You will see the Lord will battle for you. You don't have to do the battle. You don't have to prepare yourself. You don't have to prepare and get ready for yourself. You don't have to, my friend. All right. Go before the Lord, giving all glory and honor and praises to the Lord for the issue that you're facing. All right. You will see victory coming to you. And this is the blessing that is ahead. And that's a blessing is also can be yours. All right. Let's see. If any issues that you're facing, go to God in praises and worship. And as I did it, the Lord shattered the army. Shattered and scattered all the enemies. And the Lord can do likewise in your life. He will scatter your enemies of your souls, my friend. Whatever you're facing. And the Lord will help you. Strengthen you.